क्या हो गया ये दिखाई दे रहा है अभी ओके सो गुड इवनिंग एवरीवन सॉरी फॉर द डिले ऑफ टुडेज सेशन एंड अनफॉर्चुनेटली वी आर नॉट विद द बायोलॉजिस्ट फॉर ए वेरी लॉन्ग टाइम बट डोंट वरी आई एम हियर टू गिव सम ग्लिम्स एंड सम आइडिया अबाउट द बायोलॉजी साइड ऑलरेडी आई हैव वंस गिवन वन सेशन अबाउट दैट टुडे आई एम गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट सम नेचर एंड सम इम्पॉर्टेंट इंफॉर्मेशन अबाउट द फंगाई fungi fungi whatever is uh, good for you to say because both uh, abbreviation has been used around say so mostly we have seen that these fungi or uh, fungus we have seen on the dead trees rotten fruits or rotten vegetables and we have seen them as a uh, bad organism but really they grow on us or we have also some benefits from them or we have developed on them from the ancient ages till now so i'm going to talk about a little about the very famous uh, fungus or fungi or uh, very special type of fungi so there are many type of fungi like hydronite fungi tooth fungus coral fungi jelly fungi puff balls they have different type of uses bracket fungi this is very much available in iit madras every tree you know, if there is due to moisture if uh, fungus is there bracket fungi is available everywhere and sting horns they are available in rain forest they have a very bad odor that's why they are very much uh, famous in rain forest areas and the tropical areas but this is a tip of the iceberg we have been known to a very less type of species of the fungi otherwise if we go to the main branch of the fungi there are more than 6 million species of the fungi which are available but tabulated or the characterized fungi are really less than 20000 or something which are being used in different areas or at least they have been studied well in biology books or in particular things which are very much larger than the total species of plants and the animal species but if you will go through the literature or go through the uh, research the plants and the animal species have been really well studied but not the fungi what is the reason reason we can think about it because whenever we were in childhood we were told not to go near a mushroom don't touch it don't smell it it can be poisonous so many myths were there roaming around the fungi so that since childhood we were very much very much careful about these fungi so it it has been carried out for a very long time but since since some research it has been given some type of special areas very beautiful fungi also are there we can see green blue white yellow orange very colorful fungi are available there in, uh, in photographers areas or in research areas we can see they have different type of uh, pigments also which can be used in other uh, architecture side or in painting side in different sides also but what is the importance of fungi in our day to day life how they are having a very symbiotic relationship with the plants if we think about a very big areas like amazon forest which i am sitting now in front of or the rain forest or the tropical regions in our uh, western ghats and all how these plants are taking use of the fungi and how fungi are taking use of the plants so if you think we see only the top part of the fungi but that's not the only part they are actually spreading beneath the ground and they are connecting with the other fungi as well as with the plants and how they are going to benefit that i will talk about later but that's how they are actually growing they are not only the top of the things we are eating we are uh, taking pictures and we are having uh, uh, good uh, uh, smells and all but their network they are having underground is much bigger and much important for the plants and for the ourselves also because we are taking direct benefits from the plants and plants are having a very good relationship with the fungi so for example if we take an example of uh, rain forest in rain forest there are so big and long trees are available if we imagine a very small trees develop how will it get the sunlight how will it do the photosynthesis it's not possible for a small plant to do the photosynthesis 
but still it grows it become a big tree after some time this is the place where fungi play a very big role till the plant is very small the big trees send the nutrition to the small trees with the help of fungi fungi give them some nutrition like whatever nitrogen phosphorus which is not available directly in the form which the plants can take they take from the fungi fungi take the uh, carbohydrates the uh, the hydrocarbons and they give the nutrition to the little plants which are not able to do the photosynthesis for a time being that's how the fungi is taking care in the big forest rainforest mango whatever is there everywhere they are having a very big role in every forest not only in forest in a small uh, lands also they are having such kind of relationship between the plants so it is not a simple thing that plants can only get to help the little plants they have different other uses also like they get the other nutritions from the fungi either directly from the fungi which are they are converting because you have seen they are developing on the old trees they are developing on the animals or whatever they are having hydrocarbons they are having different form of the nutrients they are breaking down them and they are transferring them in the form plants can directly inhale inject or absorb so that relationship is actually well known well known from a very long time from a ancient time but we never considered it that we can really take advantage of this now how they are connected to the plants nikhil we can see a normal mushroom picture these nikhil. are the yes sir uh, according to my knowledge most of the fungi or yes many of them are actually parasites so so how will they benefit the plant yes sir i will tell you in the coming slide i will show you okay actually uh, nitrogen and phosphorus basically these two nutrients are there which are available in the environment uh, in a plenty we can say but not in the form that plants can directly take mm -hmm. these fungi they are actually parasites for the trees that's true but actually they are not taking that much they are giving also they are breaking down uh, those uh, chemicals into another form which plants can directly take okay what they take from the plants they take sugar they take carbohydrate which they cannot form because photosynthesis is not happening in fungi mm -hmm. but they are very good in creating enzymes and breaking down the hydrocarbons into the particular form which plants can take directly which okay. they cannot take from the environment which nitrogen is available in environment but plants cannot take directly they can in, not inhale the nit nitrogen directly okay so now comes into the picture like everywhere fungi is available everywhere plants are available and we have got a picture that yeah they are having a symbiotic relationship plants are giving them sugar and they are giving them carbohydrates which they cannot develop and they are getting nitrogen phosphorus in the particular form but how they are calculating are they giving as much as they want or they are calculating and then giving a particular amount like for an example whenever we are saying a big tree is helping the small tree how does he know that that particular tree knows what amount is there so in amsterdam one research team did experiment they use radioactive carbon uh, isotopes or some type of uh, form of that and they injected a particular tree with that radioactive elements so that they can see that how much amount the nearby small tree or the other trees is is he still having the radioactive elements or it's just a fungi which is using that so if we see these fungi is actually play a very smart role if that big tree is not transferring them carbohydrate they stop as soon as they give they get the carbohydrate at the sugar that time only they will transfer the nitrogen and phosphorus in the form they want those trees which are not giving them benefit they will stop giving them benefit vice versa either they will shift they will stop but they are actually a very good businessman they are not giving them without having any benefit from the plant so this is a research in amsterdam university of amsterdam they have done 
that really they are very smart whenever they are transferring the nutrition and they are having the nutrition. They are only giving when they are getting, but they are helping in a proper way. In rainforest also, in a particular uh, area also, they are helping, but they are smart in transferring the things. And that they call common mycelium network. Mycelium is the network which uh, is, uh, it's like a root, roots of the fungi, which is spread under the ground. They call it mycelium network. They call it common mycelium network. So now comes in into our lives that how fungi are really important in our life. So in our life, we usually take food, we take mushroom in different forms. In food, directly we take food. In fermentation, mushrooms are being used since a very old days. In uh, Egyptian says, we use in bread. We ferment uh, alcoholic beverages. We make cheese with the help of fungi. In medicine, 1928, we got penicillin and we got anticoagulants and uh, antibiotics. Two antibiotics are very famous. One is penicillin and another, I forgot the name. But that is extracted from the fungi and it is used in a very uh, special case when uh, somebody is having an organ transplant and if there is, there is any risk of the rejection, they use that uh, antibiotic, which is based on mushrooms only. Then they are decomposer. Decomposer means uh, we cannot connect it directly, but uh, imagine some stray dog is dead or uh, some animal, small animal is dead. Uh, if the, it is not decomposed in the time, uh, it can be rotten. It can have a very bad smell. The fungi is actually take care of uh, breaking down them, uh, tra uh, transferring them into the, into the things which can be directly uh, collected from the ecosystem. So they have a very big role in our life also. Now, I will connect a very direct picture how fungi took a very big role in World War II. So in 1928, Sir Alexander Fleming discovered penicillin, but that was used in a very small areas. But in Egyptian age, some uh, doctors, which were local doctors, they were using the uh, molded breads on the wound to stop the spreading or the infection. Some soldiers in the World War II, they read about it and during the World War, they were using the same uh, thing. They were using the rotten bread or whichever bread having fungi, they were using it on the wound to stop the infection. But actually, they were not having the clear idea that really is this the fungi which is going to help or not. But later on, they got the idea that if we, we are using the penicillin, it is really helping to recover the wound as well as it was uh, it was uh, stopping the uh, spread of the fung uh, of the infection that was the uh, one magazine was uh, published in which it was written that it's a miracle our sons can come back to the home just because of the penicillin i think that picture has been cut i don't know the title is not there so scientists during world war 2 D-Day, when they were landing with the uh, B-2 bomber and the parachute on that day, they manufactured more than 2 million doses just of the penicillin so that soldiers can take them. And there are some, uh, or should I say, uh, not the researchers, means who are breaking down the events of the World War II. They said that penicillin took a very big role in uh, friend uh, countries like uh, America and Britain to win the World War II because Germany was not having an idea about the penicillin and their soldiers were suffering that infection and they were uh, they had to lose their legs or uh, whatever infected area that was. And those soldiers which were having a big dose and the proper amount of the penicillin, they were taking care of that uh, wound and the infection carefully. So in World War II, really fungi took a uh, big role as a form of the penicillin. Now, in a very recent uh, uh, in uh, recent technology, Japan first made a very big metro network in the in the whole Japan area. It was more than twenty thousand miles. It was spread, and uh, according to the survey, the Shinjuku station is the busiest station in the world. It was so complex, so, so that they wanted to check if our uh, station locality and the connections are efficient. Though they were efficient in the world, but still they want to check. So uh, the Japanese uh, and the uh, England uh, researchers 
took one special type of fungi, which is a single cell fungi. They call it slime mold. And they put oak forks, that oat uh, you know, pieces, uh, on the station points. And they left uh, that slime mold in the center station. And they checked that after 26 hours, the fungi made a network similar, exactly similar, which Japan uh, architecture have done. So they got their idea that the efficiency of their metro rail was really good. So actually they call it brainless single cell fungi just to emphasize that they don't have any brain, but it's still somehow they are doing the calculations, somehow they are spreading in the most efficient way. So nowadays, whenever they are uh, making a metro rail or a network in any country, in Germany recent time, they are using slime mold to spread the network of the rail network in the cities. Uh, now, next thing is magic mushroom. Magic mushroom has a uh, mix information and a mix image in the world, I can say, because one side the government and uh, some religious people and some people are against magic mushrooms. In one side, Secretaries, doctors, and uh, the pharmaceutical companies, they are in the support of magic mushroom. So magic mushroom contains uh, psilocybin and which turns into psilocin upon injection. And that is actually a chemical which is uh, very much responsible in mood swings, which can change your mood. Uh, in very long time, means uh, in indigenous Americans and in Asian countries like in China and Japan, where for a very long time religious people were using that uh, that type of mushrooms uh, during they prepare a special type of uh, prasad or food for the religious. Uh, what should I say? Koi um, special puja ka kaam karte time they used to inhale it. They used to eat it, but uh, they were not using it as a uh, profession. What? But the problem is, if we take the overdose of the magic mushroom, it can hallucinate it. it can, you can get the paranoia. Vomiting can happen. Panic attack can happen. And even psychosis can happen. But the overdose doesn't have any uh, so bad Please. impact. Yes, sir. If I may interrupt you, what is the meaning yes. of psychosis? Psychosis means uh, sometime if you may have heard about the LSD and some drugs. Mm -hmm. If they take these, they uh, they try to say that they are seeing a special evil and they are seeing uh, images, they are seeing souls and uh, means uh, they will tell us uh, some people are saying oh, dekhte hai, oh, mm -hmm. kar de, like kar de. uh, yeah, that type of uh, condition they call it a psychosis. And, and, so, and how it is different from hallucination? Hallucination is also same thing, but hallucination is mostly connected to your imaginations only. Like you are afraid of the dog, then you are seeing the dog. That's the hallucination means you are not uh, beyond your imagination. But in psychosis, people uh, can say that they are seeing which is beyond their imagination. Like I will explain magic mushrooms like there are so many incidents of the uh, taking magic mushrooms that people say they took the magic mushrooms and they were seeing kaleidoscope they were seeing different type of mathematical uh, designs they were able to uh, make construct a particular thing which were they were not able to that's why there is a very mixed comments and the mixed beliefs regarding this magic mushrooms okay. there is a very a big incident in the america regarding magic mushroom during Richard Nixon uh, political power. When uh, Richard Nixon was uh, president in America, this was in a very uh, full swing. Means that time one guy took the magic mushrooms from the Mexico and he did research. And uh, because of his research, many Americans start taking it. I will explain in the next slide. So this is the guy, Timothy Larry. Timothy Larry, uh, he was uh, an American very uh, passionate american he lost his wife she did uh, she committed suicide she was in he was in depression a little bit 
one of his friend told him that in uh, mexico some people are claiming that there is a magic mushroom and they take and after taking them they are not having that much grief they are forgetting about the bad dreams they are having good time so he went to the mexico he took the magic mushroom and he explained that in mexico people were using one term that uh, our brain is uh, melting so whenever somebody was uh, hearing this word there my brain is melting nobody was able to explain it that what is melting of the brain when somebody is taking magic mushroom but when timothy leary took the magic mushroom he told that i don't know how but i am feeling the same like my brain is melting after that he said that i am not having i am accepting that my wife is no more i am accepting that i was in depression now i am not in that much grief after that he came to howard he got fund also and he started uh, uh, one research uh, in that uh, uh, mus- uh, magic mushroom and he called it uh, harvard uh, psilocybin project that psilocybin project in initially it was having a good impact in initially even the authorities were helping him from 1960 to 1963 he carried out experiment and there was one very famous experiment it was called good friday experiment but what happened after some time so many uh, what should i say people on the road who were having drugs who were having depressions they got to know that this is uh, relieving from the depression they started taking the uh, magic mushroom and initially government was not that much uh, what should i say worried because when people were taking drugs they were uh, taking overdose and they were asking for the medical help they have to be given a very good care some of them were losing life also but somehow when they were taking magic mushroom the overdose was not that much lethal so in initially government was not that much worried but somehow it became a very big problem for the political parties i will explain later but before that i will explain one important person which was called ramdas Ramdas was actually Albert his name was Albert when he was in Harvard in 1963 when both of them were fired from the Harvard in 1967 he came to India if you know uh, Neem Karoli Baba anybody know Neem Karoli yeah, Baba yeah. I, I, I know I know so he went to him and uh, he gave him some idea of the spirituality he added the spirituality uh, with the magic mushrooms and uh, he have uh, done many uh, sessions also in india also abroad also so both of them were fired timothy leary went to the jail also more than 36 times during 1960 to 1970s and the reason was see this these are the uh, saying he was he used to say during richard nixon time like think for yourself and question authority that was the time when political people got problem from him because he was telling think uh, more about yourself and people started asking religious questions they started asking about the vietnam war they started asking about the uh, world war 2 war the outcome and many questions they started asking so he got an idea that after taking magic mushrooms i don't know how people are getting rebellious they are asking question out of the box they are thinking too much to you to use your head you have to go out of your mind he was using like you will have to go out of your mind to t- to do this you will have to take some magic mushrooms means he was a very big supporter of the this particular drug that time richard dixon made an statement in the speech that timothy leary is the most dangerous man in america and he banned magic mushroom just after that and he put that drug in the means uh, the red mushroom in the same category as lsd marijuana and cocaine and uh, so many people the farmers were not happy which was actually cultivating this not cultivating it was easily available in so many villages in america they were not happy doctors were not happy and uh, those psychiatrists which were using uh, and uh, doing research on that they were not happy and uh, many researchers were there who were saying that uh, this is not just for a mood swing medicine it can be used for a particular uh, good reasons also that i will tell uh, this is the pamphlet he once uh, spread in america that turn on tune in and drop out 
now the question comes that were they really bad or are they really bad no they are not there are so many research papers in one research papers they conducted a uh, experiment on 52 patients which were having a fourth stage cancer and uh, they selected 40, 52 patients which were very much unhappy and they lost their hope in the life means if somebody has told them you have two years left you have six months left they were not happy somehow they, it happened that when they were given uh, some particular uh, collective doses of the magic mushroom or the psilocybin they started thinking in a positive way they started telling that uh, death is death we are not having any problem we will embrace the death life is like that everybody will die 60 to 70% patient accepted the death that's how it helped them to see a positivity in the rest of their life that is the research paper many depression patients were getting relief when the uh, psychologist or the psychiatrist were giving a particular uh, dose to them many uh, bollywood stars sorry hollywood stars many big personalities who were having the childhood trauma they gave that we really were uh, we were really able to cope with the childhood trauma with the help of, of that special mushroom fast recovery of stuttering is a very uh, uh, very fascinating story there was one botanist uh, he used to stutter in the childhood his uh, uh, brothers were very famous one brother was in boston university one brother was in i think oxford university but he was not able to go to any good university because he was he used to stutter he used to stutter so he was not having confidence later on his friend gave him a book on mushroom he read it he started uh, doing research on it later on uh, he got to know that uh, there is a magic mushroom he took a particular uh, bag purchased a bag but he forgot to ask the seller that how much mushroom should i take so uh, accidentally he took the whole bag uh, then he told that i was uh, on the mountain and uh, it was raining it was drizzling actually it was not raining it was drizzling but suddenly i felt like it is uh, raining like cats and dogs so he climbed the tree and uh, he was very afraid because in reality he didn't know that if really i am standing or i have jumped from the cliff so he was cling he was clinging the tree and he was reciting that i don't want to stutter i don't want to stutter after some time when he thought that yeah now i am okay he went to home in the morning he when he woke up he was able to speak without stuttering so he is a famous botanist i have seen in videos also and he is not stuttering nowadays so there are some people who are having a speaking disability some how it is working but they are uh, now able to speak and that guy is not stuttering now and these mushrooms are not having any uh, lethal outcome even if you are having a little bit more dose the outcome is not that much lethal as the other uh, um, you know, the same effect uh, drugs are there like lsd and other drugs who are doing the same thing their overdose can be very uh, fatal and the lethal but these uh, magic mushroom can be used uh, in the medicine way uh, which they can be useful now comes to the picture that why farmers doctors and uh, some pupils were not happy when that magic mushroom was banned so the reason was when uh, timothy leary uh, spread the importance and uh, the his research uh, with the help of this mushroom you can uh relief in the depression you can uh, get so many positive things and people start taking it they were giving result but political parties started telling that uh, this is having a very bad impact on the religious belief and uh, on the new youth but actually some farmers told when it was readily available from the farmers it was very cheap and pharmaceuticals companies were selling depression medicines for lakhs and lakhs dollars and when people started taking uh, that cheap mushrooms and having the benefit they were not having the uh, benefit from the uh, doctors doctors were not prescribing them costly medicines so some are having a doubt that political parties help the pharmaceutical companies so that it can be banned for the public and uh, pharmaceutical companies are still taking special permissions to use it as a 
uh, as a medicine they are converting it into tablets and uh, medicines for the depression and the other medicine so there are some hypotheses where people believe that it was not like people were getting a very bad impact from the magic mushrooms or uh, psilocybin uh, uh, mushrooms actually political people and uh, pharmaceutical companies did it deliberately there are many regions people believe that the banning those medicines were not having actual reasons which were given on the pictures magazines and newspapers they are having backhanded reasons also so this is still a hypothesis only because people only believe and know where it has been tabulated that these are the regions so these were the picture and this was the real story of the magic mushrooms thank you Oh, nice.